As I said earlier, service delivery is different from service support in that it considers long-term planning and improvement of IT service provision. So while service support looks at daily operations, service delivery actually looks at long-term planning and improvement of IT within an organization. The first process that we'll consider here is extremely important and that is service level management. Service level management entails managing all the activities between planning and reporting on service level agreements known as SLAs. In the service level management process there are five stages. In the negotiation process the IT service provider sits down with the customer and decides the most cost effective and realistic service levels. After these are decided upon they are finalized. During the finalizing stage the SLA is completed and several other supporting documents are completed along with the SLA. Then we go into the monitoring stage. In the monitoring stage the service quality is proactively so to speak monitored against service targets defined in the SLA. Then we go into the reporting stage. In the reporting stage reports that compare the agreed service levels with the measured service levels kind of like an actual against planned those type of reports are generated and they're the basis for continuous improvement within the organization. The last stage is the reviewing stage and in this stage there's a thorough examination of the different issues and the different problems that might have been encountered within the SLA management process. During the reviewing stage issues might be raised and lessons are learned and documented. One thing to realize about the SLM process is future choices and activities are usually built on previous choices and activities of the team. The SLA is really the basis for managing the relationship between the provider and a customer. It's also the primary tool for service level management and it ensures quality focus. The SLA really gives the customer power to say this service is absolutely terrible, this is not what I was promised. I demand an explanation as to why services failed, why they were not exactly how they were agreed on in the SLA. So the SLA gives the customer power and it's extremely customer and quality focused. The SLM process, service level management process, entails planning, coordinating, drafting out the SLA and agreeing and monitoring on the SLA. So it has to do with planning the SLA, planning the scope of the service levels, coordinating the service level discussions and negotiations, and drafting a preliminary SLA, and then agreeing, monitoring and reporting on the SLA that was deemed fit for the organization. What are the key features of an SLA? Well, key features of most SLAs contain all the following items. A service description, we want to know what we're doing in detail with regards to the objectives of the organization. The service description should also spell out key deliverables. By service availability, we're talking about targeted levels of the service within the organization. For instance, the agreed upon service hours. Or it might be talking about how quickly do we expect the system to be up and running. What's the recovery time being discussed here? We'll also be talking about support levels in an SLA. It should tell us how to contact the service desk. What are the available hours of the service desk staff? I don't want to call at like 8 minutes past 10 and you tell me, Oh, sorry, I went out because I felt sleepy. No. You absolutely need to make sure that the support levels are determined and described in detail in the SLA. In functionality, we discuss how many failures or issues of a particular type are we going to allow. You can't tell me the server breaks down every two weeks. That's totally unacceptable. So in the SLA, we have to define what exactly we're going to allow, how many failures, how many types of this manner of failure 
will we allow before we deem that the SLA has been breached? In an SLA, there should be charges, the charges of a specific type. That should be contained in the SLA. Also, the ITSC plans, which actually means IT Service Continuity Plans, those plans should be discussed in the SLA as well. We should also talk about security. To what length will the IT Service Department go to protect information, to make it secure? And then finally, changes. In this section, we should be talking about the change management process within the ITSM framework. SLA Structures the way an SLA is structured really depends on the organization, but there are two basic structures, the multi-level structure and the service or customer-based structure. The multi-level structure can be divided into three. The corporate level addresses all of the generic service level management issues that are relevant to every customer throughout the organization. So we could have corporate level addressing all people within the organization. Then we could have a customer level. The customer level is relevant to a particular group or department. For instance, the graphics department could have a particular SLA that is peculiar to them. The engineering department could have another SLA that is specific to them. And then we could have just the service level. At the service level, we're talking about all service level management issues that are relevant to a specific service. You need to understand the corporate level addresses everyone. The customer level could address a particular group, and then the service level refers to a particular service. At a corporate level, we could say, IT services will be available 24-7, but the infrastructure will have to be serviced over the weekend. Then we could have for the graphics department another SLA, which is a customer level SLA, and that could say, these services will be available 24-7, no interruption over the weekend, but there will be a service of the system every two months or every month. And then you could have another SLA which addresses a particular service and it could say this service will not be available between these hours, but it will be available every other time of the day. So the corporate level, the customer level and the service level, those are the three that you need to remember under multi-level. Now talking about service or customer base SLAs, for organizations that are really small and don't need to go over the top, so to speak, with a corporate level, a customer level, and a service level, we could have just one single level, just a service or customer-based structure sufficient to meet all the needs of the organization. So they could just have one SLA as opposed to having multi-level SLAs. Let's talk about negotiation output. The negotiation stage of the SLM process outputs the following documents. Service Catalog. The service catalog basically enables IT service management showcase what they've got. The catalog describes the IT services, including key features of all IT services. The Service Level Requirements document. This document covers in detail different definitions of the customer needs. What this document will enable ITSM do, IT service management do, is it will enable them modify, develop, probably even initiate new services based on the service level requirements. Next, we've got the OLA, the Operational Level Agreement document. It's really an agreement among internal providers, and it 